Bring it on, rain. Bring it on. We haven't had really any rain in, oh my goodness, I'm probably gonna say a month. Maybe even more than that. According to weather, this is the driest spring since 1888, at least in our local area. And I know a lot of the Northeast and Midwest is suffering from really dry weather. We're all in the same boat here, but boy, oh boy, we are dry. We are crispy dry. So that storm cell I was watching come in never hit us. You know, with weather systems and the weather, man, they, uh, they never really know what's going on. And basically, by the time that storm cell got to our area, it had completely dispersed at least the north side of it, and it just went south. But then last night at about 10 o'clock, we did get a spot of rain. Uh, and I'm actually out crop scouting right now. I'm looking at this hay field. So this is the new seating where we make the bulk of our horse hay. And first cutting, we were hoping to have a lot of hay, and it just didn't turn out the best uh there was a lot of spots a lot of grassy spots that were just really low on nitrogen this area being one in particular what we ended up doing is taking the hay off and then we spread some fertilizer on it now i got nitrogen on it and uh this grass is you know considerably thicker and much 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 healthier there's a chance that second cutting might actually make more hay than first cutting did and that's kind of a weird thing to say but that's that's gonna happen this is also that ditch that i filled in one of the ditches uh we spread some grass seed on there was orchard grass in here there's some alfalfa actually i honestly cannot see any alfalfa in here there was but there's one right there and then there's kind of some fescue grasses and stuff and that's all right the big thing was just to get this ditch filled to make this whole bottom piece easier to work with so i'm kind of just curious to see what the moisture is like so i'm just gonna dig a little spot here there's moisture here there's a little bit um there's you know like that's that's moist there i can there's moist there is moisture here it's not like super moist but there is moisture in there okay um the rain that we got last night it seems to be soaking in a little bit and uh, hopefully it'll help now i'm going to drive up i want to test a spot on that hill up there it's dry up there i want to see that so this right here is kind of just one of those spots in the field where it's just kind of lacking a little bit of everything uh grass is you know super dry Ain't got a lot of nutrients. The alfalfa's growing, but it's kind of spotty here. And it's just, it's one of those weird places. It's very evident. You can see there's just not much growing here. I mean, there is, but there's not at the same time. Right, I mean, like right here, that grass has not even grown since I've cut it. I'm take a spot here. So you can see right here, there's a little bit of moisture from the rain we got last night, right? Right there in that root mat where the fine roots are, there is some moisture. Very little bit, but it's there. Uh, that stuff's lime, the white stuff. But we get underneath that layer of moisture and it is bone dry. But there is moisture there for those fine roots to pull from. Hopefully it's enough to get most of this grass back up and going. It's it's just went dormant. The alfalfa is growing because it's somewhat drought tolerant. But the grass is just, at least in the majority of our hay fields, the grass is just stopped because it's so dry. So hopefully there's enough moisture there for the grass to at least get going again and just add some tonnage here. There's a chance of rain here, a couple chances of rain here still, you know, 40 50 60 percent chances but it's it's one of those things it's it's going to be those storm cells and they're super unpredictable so it's not that all-day soaker like i need i need an all-day soaker the fertilizer i spread two weeks ago is still sitting on top of the soil we have not had enough rain to drive it in the soil so it hasn't really done a whole lot yet we really need rain the day i spread it they were calling for rain that night and we got the smallest of sprinklings. I mean, it's, it's humid out, there's moisture there, but it's just, it's not raining and we are dry. Don't know if you can tell though, it is pretty hazy and that's from the uh, wildfires and stuff. So there's actually an air quality alert right now. Yeah, it's smoky. Another thing is because we've been so dry, pretty much stunted the wheat. If I mean, it stopped it from growing. It's gonna be an okay wheat crop. Yeah, it was real, it was doing really well all season long, but uh, the super dry weather just pretty much took the top end of the yield off. So, I mean, you get some small heads and stuff and it's all right, it's gonna do all right. This is actually not the best fertile spot standing here. So that's why it's not the greatest, but I mean, I mean, you look down there, it's still very green. It's, it's still growing somewhat there, but up here it's, it's like browning and yeah. Well, it's been a few days. Uh, we didn't really get much rain over the last couple of days since I talked to you last. Uh, we got a little shower, actually two little showers that, you know, maybe amounted to a tenth of an inch. And I went and the next morning I went and dug in the hay fields and there's a little, little layer of moisture, which it helped. It'll do something, but it just, it ain't, 
it ain't what we need. But today, um, they're calling for uh, quite a few showers and thunderstorms today, some possibly severe. It's a cloudy day out here, and yeah, they're calling for some severe thunderstorms this afternoon. Hopefully the weatherman's right this time. Um, we, we really need the rain, and, and we'll take what we can get at this point. Again, we need like an all-day soaker, but you know, we'll take storms if they come. I am working on this hay rake here uh, that I broke. So I'll give you a rundown of, of everything that happened. As you can see, it is in pieces and it is destroyed at the moment. I just ordered a whole bunch of parts. Um, I'll give you a rundown of what happened. So as you can see, we took the whole, uh, we, we, we split it. Split the thing right here, took the drive line out and everything. Our problem is in here. So I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah, you can see. There's a hole, okay? See the hole there? Yeah, that's the hole underneath that I showed you the one day. So, so basically what happened, uh, this guy right here, when I was going along and raking, hit the high spot, whatever, the first thing that broke was this right here. The whole spindle yanked out and yeah, the whole spindle yanked out. I couldn't fix it in the spot, so I kept raking, right? Well, basically what happened, this is your spindle here and I yanked this whole spindle out. And then this right here, this is your uh, your your cam roller, cam ro cam follower, and cam roller. So basically, this whole piece here was um, inside of that rake. We're not inside, but this thing was just rolling around the track, um, and it wasn't connected to anything. Nothing was holding this thing in. It was just rolling around the track. So I raked for twenty minutes like that. Well, because the thing wasn't holding on to anything, it wasn't connected to anything. The tying arm was out. You know, nothing was holding that on. It was just free floating around that track. And with this thing spinning as fast as it spins, it threw that roller off the track. And what happened, if you can see in there, see that's that's the cam. If the, that roller rolls around that cam, right? What happened is, is that uh, cam follower and cam roller kicked off the track and got jammed down in there. Come on, focus camera. Yeah, it got jammed down in there. Um, you can see it down in there but it got jammed underneath that cam and blew a hole out the bottom. So with that cam roll and everything getting jammed under that bottom, it seized the whole rake up, it couldn't spin. We took this gearbox apart, we took the top off of it and make sure everything was good here. The gearbox is fine, so we're good on that end. We've just gotta take this whole gearbox off so we can get to the ring gear and take everything apart. But we're having a hard time getting this gearbox off, and, but that's a story for another time. We've gotta get that off to get everything fixed. But basically the damage, is in here. So the parts that I ordered is I ordered a new uh, cam follower, cam roller for this end right here because of course the cam follower and cam roller is jammed in the bottom and blew apart. Um, so I gotta get a new one of them, which I did. Then what I gotta get is I have to get a new housing. It's this cast piece under here. I'm getting a new one of these and I'm getting a new cam as well because the cam is cracked. Yep, cam is cracked right there, see? Gotta get, gotta get a new cam because the cam is cracked. There's the roller right there. As you can see, it's jammed in there. But that's all our damage right in there. You can see that. So we're basically rebuilding the bottom end of this rake. Everything from here down and some internal parts we're rebuilding. It's about $800 in parts. <clears throat> um, we'll, we'll just say $1,000 maybe for a couple other miscellaneous parts. But, you know, it's roughly $800 to $1,000 in parts. With that money, we could buy a roller bar rake, which would be a lot simpler. Um, but you know, $800 is a lot cheaper than buying a whole new rotary rake. So I was pretty frustrated when this all broke and I was pretty much looking at this thing. It's pretty much just scrap metal at this point. But as we tore into it, we're like, okay, all these, a lot of these parts are replaceable and didn't do anything, to, didn't do anything to the gearbox that we know of. So it's fixable. We're tearing into it. We're going to get it fixed.